Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Breakfast Nomad Junior. I am Max. Today, I'll show you how to physically interact with sprites. So this is a very fun boxing game. There are two characters, a boxer and a sumo wrestler. In this game, you have to make sure you hit the sumo wrestler, but not the boxer. The very cool thing about this game is it can detect. Your own motion using your computer's camera. Let's make it. Let's start designing. So I don't know my sumo wrestler and boxer. I'm going to upload them to Scratch now. So after uploading, I just need to adjust the size of both sprites.、Mm. Mm, they should both be around forty. Next, I'm going to delete the cat. So, in order to see yourself on the project, the first thing you need to do is go to extensions and look. For an extension called Video Sensing, let's click on it to get our project. So, what Video Sensing does is that it can use your computer's camera to track your motions. Now, even you can interact with your sprites. So let's start the very basic things. Grab a green flag. Then we need to drag a block, turn video on, and set video transparency to fifty. Turn video on to activate the video sensing function. And video transparency sets how much of yourself you want to see. So, if you set it to zero, you can only see yourself. And if you set it to one hundred, you can only see the game. Setting it to fifty allows you to see both the game and yourself, but you can adjust this as you like. All right. So thank you, Max, for starting off with introducing what video sensing is and also setting up the characters. We'll continue to code for them. So. One thing here is that I'm going to make sure that these two characters behave exactly the same, which is why they're going to have the exact same codes of appearing and disappearing. So, which is why we can do all the codes in one of the characters first before duplicating it into the next one. All right, let's get started, shall we? So, we're going to start off by placing this turn video on block here. What this does is that this ensures that the game will always turn the video sensing on in the beginning. Next thing I want to do is that I want to get the green flag out and I want to hide my boxer first. So let's go for the boxer first, and then I want to hide it in the beginning. 
So after that, I'm going to make it show consecutively and hide. So it's going to show and hide. So I'm going to make it wait one second. And then it's going to show. And it's going to repeat the process of waiting again for one second and then hiding. All right. Now, so this makes the boxer show and appear in the same location and it's pretty boring, right? So it's just blinking almost. So what we want to do is that we want to get this go to block over here and we want to add some random blocks inside of it. So I'm going to set my x to minus 180 to 180 and I want to set my y to minus 120 to 120. Now the reason why some of you guys will be like, hey Mr. Mark, why not just pick a random block, you know, like go to random position. So the reason why is that we want to ensure that even though the box appears in a random location, it will always stay within this frame over here, which is why we're sticking it with this. So now we practically programmed the boxer to move to different positions. But a huge issue is that it always, you know, pops up really predictably. So I know that every one second it's going to pop up anyways, right? Now, this wouldn't be an issue except for the fact that if we put this block inside of the sumo wrestler, they will appear at exactly the same time. It's just that they'll appear in different locations, which is not what we want. So what we need to do is that we need to go to here and we could pick the zero pick this random block. Let's change it to 0 0.5 to 2. So now the boxer would choose an amount of seconds to wait between 0 0.5 and 2 before it appears again. And this makes you know the, this makes the whole game more unpredictable and more fun. Okay, so now we have the video sensing complete and we also have the bots to appear in different locations. But you're probably thinking, hmm, Mr. Mark, what would happen if I punch it? Nothing much. So we need a score obviously to set this up, but also we need to find a way where the sprite can actually detect our own physical motion. And the way that we do this is through a block called video motion on sprite over here. So there's a second block in video sensing. And so what we need to do is that we need to set up what happens when there's video motion on sprite. So we need to get a when green flag click block once again. We need to get another forever block and an if then block. Now you do realize that this block doesn't fit inside the if then, right? They're different shapes. And the reason why is that the video motion is actually a number. We need to make sure that we need to set it to a specific number in order for this video motion to trigger. So I'm going to just set this up for now. So I go to operators and then I get this bigger than sign over here. And what I can do is that I can set this video motion on sprite to be bigger than 50. And I'll explain this in a bit. So what happens is that we need to detect a punch, right? Now, video motion on sprite actually kind of detects everything. So, if you move your head a little bit, it will still, you know, it will still it will still be defined as video motion on sprite. Now, you don't want a score to count only when you merely like move your head, right? That won't make any sense. So, by making this number a bit bigger, you're trying to eliminate any uh, very small movements that may affect the game. So, over here when I make the video motion on sprite bigger than 50, I make sure that there's no change on the score even though I move my head a bit. Alright, so I got the video motion on sprite ready now. I just need to define what happens when each of the characters is, you know, punched. So, to begin with, for the sumo wrestler, when I kind of make a punch on it, it should add my score by 1. And when I hit my boxer, who's my friend, it's, we're supposed to decrease the score because that's the wrong person to hit. So what we do here is that I'm going to go to variables, I'm going to set my score up. So I'm going to make a variable, I'm going to call it score, and then I'm going to make sure that when I hit my, my boxer, I'm going to make sure that the score decreases so it goes to change by minus one. And I make sure that in the beginning, I have to make sure that whenever my game first starts, I have to set my score to zero also. All right, let's test it out, shall we? Let's try and get the boxer. So what do you see what happened? My score actually became minus 580 60. Why is that? The reason is because when I made the punch, it actually sensed every single motion I had 
on the boxer. So which is why over here I'm going to add one more block. I'm going to add a way two second block. What this does is that it makes sure that it only senses the one time that I hit the boxer and it's going to pause it for two seconds. It's going to pause the sensing for two seconds. This ensures that even when I hit the boxer, it only decreases by minus one. See? Now, all I need to do right now is very simple. I just need to drag all these blocks into the sumo wrestler. And then I need to change the score here. Instead of making the score change by minus one, I make it change by one. Let's see it now. And all right, so when I punch the sumo wrestler, it'll be quicker. When I punch the sumo wrestler, the score you see increases by one. And when I punch the boxer, it decreases again. Okay, works completely fine. And that's all for today. So let's do a recap on what we've learned today. In this project, we explored a scratch extension named Video Sensing. It allows the user to interact with the sprites. In the project, using the computer's camera. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the project. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you like it don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get our daily content i'm max and this is breakfast nomad junior